Hey, I am Michelle and I am a non-drinker. I know that probably just sounded like the start to an AA meeting, didn't it? Well, it's probably because I've had a lot of practice and I'm guessing some of you have as well. So I'm gonna make the hypothesis that if I share my experiences with you, you will feel more inclined to share your experiences with me and maybe even feel a little bit more empowered to do something about it. Now, I should probably back up and introduce myself because believe it or not, I haven't always been this excited and comfortable talking about addiction in front of a bunch of strangers. I was raised in the Pacific Northwest and this is my family. This was my first communion and as you can tell, I was definitely rocking the 90s fashion trend. From the outside looking in, a lot of people would describe my childhood as a fairy tale. My father was a well-known and respected physician. We were well-traveled and had a beautiful home. My father ended up passing away from a massive heart attack when I was 15 years old. By the time I was 16, I met my high school sweetheart, who is now my husband. One thing that my father told me before he passed away was, Michelle, you are going to make this world a better place. And with most things, he was right. Right after college, I landed my dream job within the Department of Corrections. As you can only imagine, walking through a maximum security prison took some getting used to. But I was so excited to start making real change and having an impact on this world just like my dad had told me. My husband decided to enlist in the military and was deployed right after. Within a few months of deployment, he was injured and returned home. He finally landed his dream job and life was really good. We had a beautiful home and two healthy, beautiful, amazing children. And as the years went on, I started to notice a trend. It was about every two to three months, my husband would wait for me to wake up in the morning and he would say, we need to talk. He would have this concerned, disappointed look on his face and say, Michelle, do you remember what happened last night? And with this sense of shame and confusion washed over my face, I would say, babe, I have no clue. We started to notice that my drinking habits had increased. I was finding it more difficult to control my alcohol consumption. We started to come up with a plan of taking the alcohol out of the house, only drinking on weekends, switching the type of alcohol that I was drinking. Nothing worked. I had a really hard time giving up my love for the bottle. I truly felt like it was a social suicide. I didn't know how or if I could ever give up my love affair for alcohol. Fast forward five years and this was my life. I was a full-time working mom, feeling like a horrible mom because I worked and a horrible employee because I was a mom. Everything that I dreamed of and worked so hard to build, I was living. And all I wanted to do was escape all of it. Working in a penitentiary is so traumatic and it's exhausting over time. And my to-do list at home was like a million miles long. I didn't know where I could possibly fit in self-care or any type of friendships. I truly felt like I was failing at life and disappointing everybody. What I had envisioned for my life was nothing close to my current reality. So the next time my husband said, Michelle, we need to talk, it was different. He was sitting at the foot of my hospital bed as I had just been admitted for a fatal alcohol poisoning. My mother had just passed away as I was learning to become a mother myself. It was all too heavy and I utilized alcohol as a way to cope and escape it all. That was the moment where my two worlds collided. The secret life and my real life that I had worked so hard to keep separate. I met with my doctor the day after I was discharged from the hospital. 
it was time for me to start being honest about my relationship with alcohol. I felt a sense of calmness wash over me knowing that it was over, that the secrecy and the pain and the isolation had come to an end. And my doctor was so kind and patient with me and said, Michelle, you are so far from alone. And although that made me feel a sense of ease, I asked her, where are all these people and why are we hiding and doing this all alone? And I thought about it and I'm like, our society shames the sick. We are not having these types of conversations about problematic drinking as water cooler talk. So when I got home that evening, I did what any normal person would do that's confused about their relationship with alcohol. You guessed it. I asked Google. And oh boy, was that information so confusing. There were so many quizzes, tests, and assessments around, are you an alcoholic? Are you able to moderate? Do you need to abstain? That I left the web more confused than ever before. I decided to reach out to a friend who put me in touch with an addictions therapist. I was really excited to start doing the work around my bereavement from the grief and loss with my parents, the postpartum depression. I needed to start doing the work that was internal, that was giving me the permission to reach for an external solution to an internal problem. I started to realize that alcohol was a tool that I was using that I had picked up in my daily habits and routines. And so that was really exciting to see that there were many different ways to treatment and pathways to recovery other than just Alcoholics Anonymous. So I leaned in and got really curious about all the different treatment modalities that were possible. And through this process, I was really excited to start recovering out loud, to start using my voice for those who weren't ready yet, because I know what it's like to be in secret and our silence keeps us sick. And I was going to be that voice until people were ready to use theirs. And they need my voice more than my protected silence. And at that point was when Recovery is the New Black was founded. Wine has practically become a must-have for modern-day motherhood. It is right up there with messy bun, coffee, yoga pants, and minivans. We've probably all laughed at the memes that flood our social media feed that talk about moms needing wine to cope with life and with motherhood. Most people who share this type of stuff don't have a problematic relationship with alcohol. But there are so many people who do, and I am definitely guilty of being on board with mommy wine culture until I saw for what it was. And it's so problematic for people who are genuinely struggling that they're not getting the help that they need due to the jokes and to the peer pressure. Media is making a ton of money, and so is the alcohol industry, by offering moms alcohol as a solution to motherhood. There is this unwritten rule that motherhood is really hard and that alcohol helps. Many of us aren't given permission to admit that we're struggling and so we don't ask for help. We don't seek support and we stay in isolation and our secrets have been keeping people sick. What starts out as social drinking can quickly turn into a daily habit that is used to unwind, relax, take the stressful rough edges off that really stressful day. I'm guilty of doing it to quiet the noise in my head and to treat myself as a reward for a job well done. Alcohol is so accessible, it's convenient, it's it's inexpensive, and no one's going to question you but people are losing their jobs, their marriages, their kids, their homes, even their lives to suicide and overdose. I encourage them to really ditch labels that can stigmatize, that can leave us feeling small and call ourselves what we are. We're non-drinkers. Here's how society views addiction. Now this is what it really looks like. Yep, this is a full bottle of wine inside of a Yeti cup. 
people are getting way more creative about how they are hiding their alcohol consumption because our society is shaming the sick. Therefore, people are not wanting to ask for help. What makes it even more difficult is that we live in a really, really boozy culture. One out of eight adult Americans meet the diagnostic criteria for alcohol abuse disorder. So this means 12.5% of the people watching this right now are drinking more than is recommended. Now, I am not here to tell you that alcohol is bad or that you should not drink it, but I will tell you that I am absolutely pro sobriety and I will shout that from the rooftops. But in all seriousness, let me give you a few examples of what I'm talking about. Well, so let's say that my friend has just given up smoking and has 30 days smoke free. The conversation would go something like this. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. I know how hard you've been working on that. It's a really nasty habit you've been kicking. I am really, really proud of you. Keep up the good work. Now, how a conversation would go if somebody was alcohol free for 30 days. What? You're supposed to go out with me this weekend. What do you mean you're not drinking? Are you pregnant? Is this a joke? Are you an alcoholic? Don't think I'm not going to drink because you're not drinking. You know one won't kill you, right? You are such a buzzkill. Now this are these are real life examples of what people deal with every single day by society because they choose not to pick up a mind altering chemical that is destroying them from the inside out. What we need to remember is that some people who say no thank you to alcohol doesn't mean that they're an alcoholic, have a problem, or are under some court mandate. Some people have medical restrictions, allergies, medication interactions, religious beliefs, Let's not forget the smart individuals who know that this is a known carcinogenic. So there's lots of reasons why people say thanks, but no thanks. Now there is strong evidence to support that alcohol increases cancer, all types of cancer, like stomach, colon, bowel, breast, just to name a few. Now it has been 30 years since 1988 that Congress passed the Alcohol Beverage Labeling Act. And what this is, is the labels you guys are used to seeing on the alcohol. It is, it might impair your judgment if you are operating a machinery or driving a vehicle. It may increase birth defects if you are pregnant. And the last one is, is it may cause health issues. Now, if we updated these labels and we had more education about what we were really consuming, do you think anything would change? Would you reconsider your evening nightcap if you knew it was the same ethanol that you put in your gas tank was the same ethanol that you were drinking every evening? Would you reconsider that drink? Now, here is a picture of me drinking. Wait, it's not so cute, is it? right? It's not that whole billboard magazine, sex in the city, glitz and glamour we're used to seeing. Absolutely not. This picture would never sell. Society encourages drinking straight out of pictures like sex in the city. But the problem is, is it is not so classy when you can't stop drinking. Now we're in a pandemic for the last year. Americans have rushed to stock up on alcohol. And there's been so many new concerns about excessive drinking during this really hard season of life that we're in. And we have alcohol sales that have gone up 54% in the last year. Our online sales for alcohol are up 500%. Americans are reaching for comfort solutions during this time of uncertainty in this really hard season of life. We are using one public health crisis to worsen another. Are you willing to be part of the solution? Where do you fit in? 
If you can drink responsibly, that is fantastic, but not everybody can. How can you help support people who are trying to normalize sobriety and live a happy and fulfilled life alcohol-free? We deserve to have alcohol-free living, not be made fun of, but supported like other medical conditions. So a way that you can support somebody is don't ask them why they're not drinking. Don't ask them if they are an alcoholic. Don't wait for them to be so self-destructive that they need way more help than they would have needed if they just started. So remember, no is a complete sentence. It doesn't matter why. And no thank you is all it should take. Addiction does not discriminate and nobody is immune to this. I never in a million years thought this would have happened to me. And don't think that it can't happen to you either. I will leave you with this friendly reminder. Please be kind to one another. Everybody is fighting an internal battle you know nothing about. Thank you so much for letting me share today.